Now, I replaced the voltage meter with the red LED. And I will put the ends of the red and black jumper wires in clear water. And let's see what happens. The red LED comes on. You could also place the ends of the jumper wires in salt water, which I don't have, or on the shapes I drew, which I will try to do. The LED may glow a little bit, but other than that, I can't really say that I was able to get the LED working that way. I am going to use this circuit, and the meter will be set on the 5 volt setting. I will move the slide switch to position B and the red LED will light and the fan will spin at a moderate speed. The voltage that the battery is producing is split between the motor and red LED. I will now push the press switch. The LED will turn off but the motor will speed up a little bit because the motor has a higher voltage now. When the press switch is on, full voltage is available for the motor since the LED is bypassed. Switches like these are used to move voltage around in a circuit. When I release the press switch, the current is split between the fan and LED again. And you can see the meter changing too. For project 37, moving more voltage, there are three parts. The first part has the meter lined across the circuit where the horn is located. It is set on the five volt setting and we will hold down the press switch. Now the meter shouldn't be too loud, but turn the horn shouldn't be too loud, but turn down your volume just in case. Here we go. Yeah, it's not too loud. The LED lights up brightly, though, and the meter reads between one and a half and two volts. Now, I'm going for part B. I am going to move the meter down over here where the red LED is connected. Let's turn on the slide switch. Volume warning, please. Now, the meter reads close to two volts, just a little less. And then for part C, we will place the meter across the battery pack and activate the switch. Now, the meter reads just over three, between three and a half and four volts. The horn voltage plus the LED voltage should be about the same as the battery voltage. But it may be a little different because the meter has limited accuracy. This isn't a perfect meter as I've explained before in previous projects. The voltage across the switch will be very low when it is pressed. Project 38 is very well involved and actually this is going to cover all the projects up to 43. And it is called Power Sources. And this kit contains six electrical sources. You have the rechargeable battery, the hand crank, the solar cell, the windmill, and the liquid holder. Now, I did not use this source because I'm not sure exactly how you assemble it. You need to do a little bit of assembly and then you have to put certain kinds of liquids like apple juice inside and I am not really interested in doing that so I'm not going to use this source but I already recorded information for the other sources and the different projects require you to use different components like the clock, the horn, and combinations of the LEDs and horn. And I recorded whatever results I could. Now I do not have the best handwriting, but you can see the voltage for 
the different sources. The highest meter voltage would be 3.5 volts for the battery, at least 5 volts for the hand crank, 5 volts for the solar cell, and 2 volts for the windmill. The highest meter current would be at least 50 milliamps for the battery and hand crank, 3 milliamps for the solar cell, and 23 milliamps for the windmill. For the clock, it seems to work great with the battery. It only works well the hand crank is turned when using that component, and it has same re results with the solar cell and it does not work with the windmill. For the horn, it works great with the battery, only works when the hand crank is turned with that. It does not work with the solar cell, and it is faint with the windmill. The yellow LED works great with the battery and hand crank. There's moderate power with the solar cell and moderate power with the windmill. For big voltage, which is Project 42, using both LEDs in series, they work good with the, the battery. They work great with the hand crank, as well as with the solar cell, but they do not work with the windmill. Finally, with big current, the, three, the two LEDs and the horn work great together with the battery, and hand crank, but they do not work with the solar cell, and there is little power with the windmill. Here are the instructions on how to use each of the power sources, and we can conclude that the most powerful power source is the one which produces the best balance of voltage and current, because different types of circuits need different levels of voltage and current. For each power source, the balance between voltage and current produced can be adjusted by changing its construction or with how groups of them are arranged. Now, you may need to recharge the battery before using it for Project 38 or any other project, but we can conclude that all of these power sources have their advantages and disadvantages, depending on the circumstances.